Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back once again to the Tech of Tomorrow YouTube channel. I'm Eric Ferris, your host, where today we're going to bring you an unboxing and first features look at the new P8Z77V motherboard from the people over at ASUS. Now, this is their entry-level motherboard on the stack for the new Z77 series. This motherboard comes to market at about $205 and has lots of great features. One thing I just want to note before we jump into anything, if you guys missed it, check out our video that we did over on motherboards.org where we actually had an interview with JJ from Asus and we went over all the different specs. But for now, let's jump in and let's take a closer look at this new motherboard from the people over at Asus. <laughs> All right, folks, like for every good unboxing, we start off with, hey, a box. Start right here and show you guys this, P8Z77-V. Some of the features on there, there's Smart Digi EPU and TPU, which we'll get to as we unbox the board. Obviously, this board supports both SLI and Crossfire, and with the new Virtue MVP, you can use your video cards in any combination you want. A lot of that stuff down here, Wi-Fi, just sit from the box. Flip it around, just real quick, show you guys the back of the box. For some people this may be boring, I know, but other people like to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just set the box back down the table and begin the actual unboxing. On top here we have the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the motherboard out of the package so we can actually see all of the content that comes in the box. There's actually a lot of good content on there. Gonna have a nice little box toss here. Woo! All right, cool. So I'm gonna start off with this is a little Wi-Fi to go. Every one of the motherboards in Asus's new stack for the Z77 includes Wi-Fi to go. Now this is a really cool feature. This allows you to actually transfer all of your files and operate from one PC to another. So you can actually take all the music from one PC or a movie and play it onto your laptop in another room. It's really cool stuff. That's piece number one. Then we've got two SATA cables. Go ahead and set those down. We have the rear I.O. Here are Quick Connect. These go from all your wiring from your case onto your motherboard. Make it nice and simple to connect everything. Then we have the Crossfire cable. Here's the wireless antenna. This goes to that little Wi-Fi to go thing. This is the antenna that helps you pick up all your signals. Set that down. This is the Wi-Fi to go Fan Expert 2 network control USB charger. Fan Expert 2 is a really cool feature, allows you to custom control all of your fans in real time, whether in the BIOS or in the Windows operation. Network Eye Control, this is a new feature that features on the Intel Network LAN. It allows you to custom configure all your LAN features. You can prioritize it. USB Charger 3 allows you to quickly charge all of your stuff through the USB on the motherboard or through your case if you hook it up that way. Set that up, give lots of good explanations there. Just version 1.4, 3D HDMI. You guys know that HDMI provides both video and audio signals. Then once again, we have a Wi-Fi to go card. There's a little card we showed you. This is the installation guide. The user's manual. And obviously inside here should be the driver CD. Voila. We have the driver CD and the case badge right there. This would be the bundles page and a review or the content. Now let's move on to the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing out. Go ahead and set this down right off the bat. You guys can see this is a standard ATX form factor motherboard. And I'm gonna do this a little different than I do most motherboard reviews. I'm gonna start out with the rear IO this time. We're gonna do something a little different. Here, we see a combination port. This is legacy keyboard and mouse. Remember, this is the entry level motherboard of the new Asus line. So this board has legacy ports. It also features a standard VGA port. Now, before I thought this was a cheap way to do it, but actually this is part of APAC. APAC is for all the Asian countries and for those countries that want to meet the APEC standard, you have to have one of these because those people still have those type of monitors. Here we have the USB 3.0. These USB 3.0 ports actually contain higher wattage on them for charging your devices. Previous generations only allowed you to charge Apple stuff. New generation stuff allows you to charge PC and Apple stuff. Then we've got a couple standard USB ports next to that. We have DisplayPort, HDMI, digital audio, DVI, another set, USB 3.0. This is the onboard Intel LAN, which features the eye control and then our 
analog audio inputs right there. So did something different there, start with the I.O. I'm going to flip the board around. We're going to start talking about fan headers. This is an entry level board. It has five fan headers in the board. The first two are located up here right above the ZIF socket. This is a perfect location for those because when you hook your fan up right there, you can easily hook your connections up right there so you don't have wires just strung out all over your case. So there's two here. There's an additional one right here. Another additional one right here. Right here. Lots of fan headers there. Set the board back over here. Let's talk about power. Here we have the 8-pin power connector located to the left and above the ZIF socket. Then we have our 24-pin power located over here. I'm going to bounce back over to the ZIF socket. This is still LGA 1155, but it supports both Sandy Bridge and the new coming 22 nanometer Ivy Bridge processors. These will be out on the 23rd, which is next Monday. I'm going to flip the board around, show you guys memory. Here we take a look at the memory slots. You can see that they are color coded so you know which channel that they're in. This board supports up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Flip right over here. Right here we see the MEM OK button. Now the MEM OK button has actually a couple of different features. The MEM OK button can be used to if you set memory in your board and it's just clocked too high, you hit the MEM OK button, it actually makes your motherboard go. But something that people don't often realize is that this button also allows you in the overclocking environment just go ahead and hit this button it'll clear your settings so you wouldn't have to go back and reset everything in your bios this would just clear those settings you'd still maintain all of the other settings other than the overclocking ones it's pretty good then we have the digi plus vram a lot of people ask what this is digital controller means that you can operate your uefi bios the same way inside of the windows environment so what you can do in your bios you can do in the windows environment there are actually two switches on here also the epu and the TPU. These two switches right here are your EPU and TPU switches. Now a lot of people just want a simple answer. Okay, the TPU basically is an instant overclock button. You want to have superior overclocking, you just click that button on and away you go. Now if you're a user who use the board in standard mode and you just want to save electricity, then you want to use the EPU switch. Pretty cool stuff. Next, let's talk about USB headers, external ones that is. Here on the bottom we can see one, two, three, four USB connectors. Now these connectors also have superior ESD. There are little chips behind each one of these that allow for an anti-static discharge to not happen. Now, some people in the past have actually plugged devices into their USB ports and fried their device by having static electricity. This board features superior ESD, and if that happens on this board, it has an off switch that does not allow the current to go onto the motherboard and fry it. I think this is a very, very good feature and one that gets looked over quite a bit. Here is another header. This is the USB 3.0 header. Now let's talk about the cooling on this motherboard. You can see that all the MOSFETs and everything are completely covered up here and down here as well. It's all passive cooling, but it should work pretty well. Doing that Ivy Bridge isn't going to be a super duper hot solution as it is. Let's move over now. Let's take a look at your PCI expandability. Now this motherboard has one, two of the PCI times one slots. We see two standard PCI slots, and then we see one, two, three PCIe slots. The PCI slots are actually separated by this. This is a 16 slot, this is an 8 slot, and this is a 4 slot. If you run the cards in Crossfire or SLI mode, these will be both times 8. If you use the Virtue, you'll be using either these cards and that, or you can actually use the card with the embedded solution of the HD4000 in the new Ivy Bridge processor. Lots of good stuff there. Let's flip it over now. Let's talk about SATA expandability. We have a couple different controllers on this board. We have both the Intel and the Asmedia solution on this motherboard. We have both support for standard SATA and the new SATA 3 connectivity. Last but not least, I'll just flip it around, let you guys see the back of the board. These things right here actually help keep the board even run even cooler. And that's really about it, folks. So hey, thanks for watching folks. This has been the unboxing and first features look of the new P8Z77-V motherboard. Come to the market about $205. Should be available everywhere next week. See you later.